Now, I will submit to you that there's another question that we will have to answer. It's not a question that's going to be asked of us after we die. It's going to be a question that we will have to answer before we die, in my opinion. It's not a question of what. It's not a question of who. It's a question of why. Why Islam? Why is Islam better than Christianity? Why is Islam better than Judaism? Why is Islam better than Hinduism or Buddhism? And I think we all are going to answer this question or going to have to provide the answer to this question at some point in our lives, at one time or another. Now, why do I say this? I say this for two reasons. Number one, because we have to answer the question to ourselves. We have to ask the question to ourselves, and we have to answer it to ourselves. Why? Because we have to make sure that we don't take this faith for granted. We have to make sure that we are absolutely convinced that Islam is the truth. We have to make sure that our faith and our practice is secure. Now again, the overconfidence comes in as human nature. As human beings, we say to ourselves, as Muslims will say, I'm good, no problem. I know my faith is secure. I know I'm a Muslim. <coughs> Let me tell you the story of a friend of mine whose name was Bilal. And I can guarantee you he said the same thing, that his faith was secure. This brother, I remember him as always having a smile, always praying, always making dhikr, always reading Quran. He was a convert from Christianity, and he was so excited to discover Islam. Amazing brother. And when I shook his hand, you can feel the love. When I would embrace him, you can feel it. He had the Islam. He had the character, and it, for all intents and purposes, he was practicing Islam. So I left that community. I moved to a different area. Five years later, I came back to visit, and I said, where's Bilal? You know what the imam told me of the community? He said he left. He converted to Judaism, a Muslim converting to another religion, Judaism. Uh, now, first I thought to myself, wait a second, Judaism, that's kind of odd. Usually people convert to you know, Christianity. Judaism was kind of strange. So I said, why did he do that? Did he give you a reason? The imam said, he converted to Judaism because the Jews were more organized. And the Muslims were disorganized. And I said, subhanAllah, what a reason to forsake your faith to forsake the religion of Islam, this beautiful way of life, because some people are disorganized. So he essentially predicated his faith and his practice on something that was relative. The idea of a community being disorganized or organized. That's what he predicated his whole belief on, his whole practice. Does that make sense? He didn't predicate his faith. He didn't base his faith and his practice on something that was absolute. Because organization is a relative thing. What happens when he becomes part of the Jewish community and they're organized for a period of time? And then, as human beings do, they become disorganized. What happens then? Is he going to leave Judaism for another religion? So it didn't make sense. And so he thought that his faith was secure. He thought that his faith and his practice was sound until people became disorganized and he left. So if we're saying that our faith is sound, that our practice is secure, can we be absolutely certain about that? 